dyslexic, a dyslexic learner from Port Elizabeth has won the first prize at the 2019 Kenya Science and Engineering Fair. Caroline Boshoff from the Cape Recife High School in Port Elizabeth scooped the first prize for her project Saka Isizwe Fundo, which means a building a nation through education. Now, the 16-year-old learner investigated the differences between privileged and underprivileged children during early development. And joining us now via Skype from the Eastern Cape is Caroline Boshoff. Thanks so much, uh, Caroline, and it's fantastic to speak to you this morning. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Good morning, listeners. So, Caroline, let's start here. You are dyslexic. So, for those who may not know, can you please explain to us what that means? Dyslexia is when a person struggles to read and write, especially I am four years under my uh, age. So I can currently read grade seven work and I'm in grade 11. So, yeah. And, 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 and despite all of this, of course, you've managed uh, this great feat. And um, before we uh, talk about uh, this particular project, if you could just uh, talk to us about some of the challenges that you face as someone who is dyslexic. For instance, I have to adapt in, uh, with schoolwork, with ways to uh, work with people, for instance, if they hear you have a disability. Uh, they will think, really, what's wrong with her? They don't see me for the person, but they see that I have a disability. So that was a lot of challenge. So in spite of that, you decided to embark on uh, this uh, very important project. Uh, what was your main motivation for that? Um, I struggled with schoolwork when I was younger and I didn't know what to do. So then I went to my grandmother and my mom and I told them, I'm not special. And then my mom and my grandmother said, you are special. God made you special. So just find out what you're good in. And if you're good in it, just do it. So then I found I'm good in talking. And then I decided I'm going to talk and help people. <laughs> Which is absolutely fantastic. Now, tell us about your research project and um, also what you did, because I understand you took a look at the socioeconomic conditions of uh, children from economically underprivileged backgrounds and contrasted and compared that to children from more privileged backgrounds. But give us a little more detail in that regard. Yes, I had three categories, the children from the privileged communities, the underprivileged communities, and children with disabilities. Because I believe every child has the right for schoolwork. They just need to be assisted, especially if you don't have the resources or if you have a disability. So then I designed a teacher's manual uh, to assist the ECD teachers uh, when they do the schoolwork. And also I designed a children's workbook so that they could actually have the material so that they could do their day-to-day -day schoolwork. And then I also designed a, a toolkit full of games made out of recyclable items so that the children can play in a funful way and the teachers don't be money left. So, and then also, because we're in the 21st century, we always use games and computers. So I designed a computer game in three languages, Afrikaans, English, and Isikosa. It all sounds absolutely fascinating and fantastic. So, so how long did your research actually take and where did you conduct it? It took me very long. I started my first project like this one in 2014. And every year I just improve on it. Because uh, every year I just find new things to put together. 
So it takes a very long time. And, and Caroline, tell us a bit about your findings. What did you actually learn uh, through this uh, research that you've been doing? That most children can't jump rope. <laughs> and that. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Coordination problems. <laughs> yes, visual perception problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that children from an under economical privilege. Uh, achieve better schoolwork than children from a disadvantaged community and the children at the bottom is the children with the disabilities and that's where I decided enough is enough and I should do something. And, and, and tell us a little bit about what exactly you intend to do because I'm, I'm really inspired and I'm fascinated uh, by your passion but also not just a passion that is static. You're actually doing something about this. Yes, I'm currently in grade 11 in Cape Perceive, as you know and if I'm matriculated I would like to go study teaching at NMNU. I could have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then I would like to open my own MPO called Saka Isizu Gen Fundu. It means build the nation through early education. So that's what I would like to do. And then let's talk a little bit about uh, the Kenya Science and Engineering Fair. And, and you spoke about uh, some of the uh, materials, support materials that you actually developed. How did you develop it? What sort of materials did you use? For instance, I used a lot of specialists in the field to sh make sure the items actually work for the child because it doesn't help. I give them the materials and it doesn't work. So I went to various specialists, teachers, OT therapists, and everyone who assists me so that I can know it works. Is there any chance that you may have any of those tools uh, somewhere close by that you can show us? <laughs> no, unfortunately. I'm on a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people are lucky. Some of us are working. But, but, but you know what? Um, we'd love to see some of those. Perhaps if you can send us some pictures and we could at a later stage perhaps show it to our viewers as well, uh, some of the products that you have developed. But um, how did it feel uh, just uh, coming out tops in that science fair? Well, I didn't think I'm going to get a prize, really. The standards was extremely high. And when they called my name, I'm like, is it me? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I was totally shocked when they called my name because I didn't think I'm going to win the behavioral sciences. So, yeah, that was totally a shock. I was like, I was calling my mom. I was like telling her, Mommy, I won. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, congratulations. Fantastic work. But, but from this work that you've done, Caroline, um, with, as someone with um, a disability, I think you are the perfect person to perhaps send that message out to South Africa, to people who work in these fields of early childhood development and who are dealing with some of the problems that you have had a first opportunity to gleam into, what sort of message would you like to send out to the educators or anyone working in that sphere? I just would like to tell them, you can always try to assist children. You don't leave them behind. You can just help them. You can use bottle top so you don't have to throw them away. You can learn them how to count. You must just try your best. Because every child in South Africa or in the whole world ha must have an opportunity to further education. And, and I believe the sky was never the limit. And if you have a disability, please tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ's strength in me.
Well, Caroline, thank you so much for speaking to us. And what a lovely interview that is uh, with uh, Caroline Boshoff, a learner from the Cape Receive High School in Port Elizabeth. And she won the first prize for her project at the 2019 Kenya Science and Engineering Fair. And as she was speaking, I just knew Caroline would go on to become a teacher. And I think the children who will be taught by her are absolutely, absolutely blessed already. They just don't know it. And uh, on that good note, uh, let's just take a quick break and then we'll come back because there's always, always space for one more story.